So today the question we're asking again is, are celebrations important and why? And the scripture we're going to look at is Deuteronomy 11 verse 19. And this verse is set right down in the middle of a chapter about God giving his people all of his commands, all of his laws. And a lot of times when we think about God giving laws and commands, even in Christianity, we tend to sort of be like, well, you know, the law is old or the law is in the old covenant and Jesus abolished the law. And we think, oh, that sounds, you know, like a dictatorship or whatever. But of course, again, he is God who made all the laws of nature. He made uh, the sun come up and tell what day it is. He made the stars set, you know, in their place. Gravity, everything has laws that were governed by in order for it to function. He says to them in Deuteronomy 11:19. Teach them to your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. So this is a command for the people who know and have seen and have heard the law, the commands, the instructions of God to be the ones to pass it on to their children. You can see that this is really important to God to make sure that that next generation knows the instructions because he's not gonna encounter them the same way he encountered this generation that he's talking to. And he says, you must tell them as an eyewitness. You must tell them and they must, you know, listen to your teaching. And so it says to do it all the time. Always remind them when they go to sleep, when they wake up, when you walk along the road, talk about these commandments. Because the more you meditate on them, the more you talk about them, the more you're un gonna understand the heart behind them. And this is what's so beautiful about when Jesus came and explained and lived out and showed everyone around him what the law actually says in the heart of the law. And he quotes Deuteronomy all the time. He shows that God is, is a God of perfect justice, perfect righteousness, perfect mercy and love like we can't understand. And he showed that through his life and through his, the, the things he said and when he quoted the scriptures and how he put it in context. And so he wanted us to get this before he came. He wanted his people to continuously think through what does it look like? You know, thou shalt not commit adultery. And when Jesus talked about that verse, he went to the heart of adultery. He didn't just say the act of adultery. He said, well, you know, if you're sitting around, you know, intentionally lusting after a woman with your eyes, like thinking about this, you've already committed adultery with her in your heart. He was, he went beyond what the words said and went straight to the heart of it and, and went to the heart of man and showed how even the religious righteous people who thought they were so, so clean in the way they lived because they didn't commit adultery, that they continuously entertained this adultery in their heart. And this is what was most important to God all along. And if they had done these things, like it was written, to meditate on, on these words day and night, to explain them to their children and talk about them to their children, then they would have gotten to the heart. And I think a lot, there, there must have been many who did because God pulled these people out of, of the midst of a bunch of confusion and said, this man is the one I'm going to use to lead the people or, or this man is righteous or there's, there's this many people who haven't worshipped idols that are, you know, still faithful to me. So if you actually look at the face value, I believe you get to the heart behind it if we listen to what it is saying here. I know for a fact that when I read the scripture to my children in the morning or at, in, at night, like when they first wake up, when they go to bed, this time with my kids is so precious. It is, they're, they're sleepy and they're curious and, and they ask amazing questions that makes me learn. So I hate missing that time. I love protecting it because if I get that time, I know that my soul is gonna grow. And so often, you know, when we have kids as parents, we're like, wonder how we have time to do anything. And I learned this when, when my children were very young and I didn't have time to do anything. I learned how to just bring them with me 
to go seek God and bring them with me. If I'm worshiping God with my guitar and playing, I bring them with me. If I'm reading the Bible, I read it out loud to them. And this is when they ask profound questions and I have to answer it in such a simple way. And it really makes me grow and learn. But I realized recently within the past few years, we've been consistent in celebrating what is in the scriptures, making celebrations out of what's in the scriptures. We've been celebrating Shabbat, like we talked about the Sabbath on Friday night to Saturday morning um, to Saturday night. And when we do that family dinner where we come together, our kids actually have a memory of every Friday night, us taking time to remember what Sabbath means, what rest means, what the point of family is. The other celebration that we do is Passover. The, we do it on the day that Jesus celebrated Passover with his disciples. Then we go stay in a tent and, and we celebrate Gethsemane um, by sleeping in a tent because Jesus prayed all night in the tent. And we read that story. And we read the story of Jesus and his disciples sitting at the at the table for Passover and we sit on the floor and we eat and we go through this story. But even when, when we celebrate these things from the scriptures with food and music and joy and attention to our kids, um, just answering their questions and, and being present with them, we ourselves, me and Josh, are, as parents, we learn so much. The scriptures come to life. So I think even though we aren't required to do these things, whenever we make these celebrations and these moments meaningful and go out of our way to make a big deal of these things as a family, it becomes a big deal to our kids. They take it seriously. It's not just a story that happened thousands of years ago that's unrelatable anymore. It's a yearly and regular reminder and, and celebration that we experience together as a family. There's nothing like it. There's no other time that the scriptures come to life so vividly. There's just so much wisdom in what God gave us when he gave us the feasts and celebrations and the scriptures and we figure out ways to celebrate it where our kids can remember. And I, I've seen so much fruit of it, fruit as in there are great things that come out of it in the lives of my children and in our family in general. Let's pray for our hearts because I feel like this is a really important way that we love God back, just in honoring Him and embracing celebration. So Father God, I thank you, Lord, that in your scripture you tell us over and over to have celebrations. Um, and in the New Covenant, you talk about how it's not important to have celebrations in the sense that it's going to make us righteous because it won't. And I thank you, Jesus, that you fulfilled all the requirements of the law. So we don't have to be slaves to the letter of the law, but we can be lovers of God that love your word. And I pray that we would become lovers of your word and of you, God. You've loved us so freely. And so I pray that we would willingly and freely love you back and celebrate you and celebrate your word in all kinds of ways. Give us creative ways to celebrate you, to celebrate your word, to celebrate the rest that we have in you. All the things that you've done to remember all that you've done. I thank you, God, for all the ways that you teach us how to have life and you warn us how to avoid death in so many ways where our souls die when we choose things that are destructive to our souls i pray that you would give us give us wisdom lord and give us strength to overcome lord give us joy your word says that your joy is our strength so god i pray for joy in our lives every day and every day we would remember to celebrate you and if there are special times that we need to get together with our family and or even just with you one-on-one -on -one, to remember something important. I pray you would give us ways to, rem to remind ourselves of those important things. Give us ways to connect as a family. Give us ways to connect with people who love you, with our spiritual family. I thank you that in heaven we will be one big family and that we won't have all the hang-ups that we have here on the earth. We won't have those in heaven. We won't have that, those strange jealousies and 
and confusion. We're going to have clarity and grace and love. And I just pray that we would taste that in the earth, God, among the people that you put around us. That we would taste what it's like to have community and celebration in heaven on the earth, Lord. Do it in our hearts. Do it in our minds. Do it in our relationships, Lord. And bless us, God, to love you back. Because that's our heart's desire. Just that we would love you back. You've loved us so well, God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen.